today we're going to do an in-depth review of the new Apple MPX AMD GPU, the W6800X Duo. And we're not only going to use one, we're going to use a total of four, which will be the most powerful configuration of GPUs ever in the Mac Pro. And of course, we're going to test Final Cut benchmarks, Resolve benchmarks, and then the third will be miscellaneous games as well as 3D work, things that people are generally interested in. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on if you should buy it or not. Is it better than the last generation? GPUs and I'm also going to address some issues with overheating and other issues that people with their early copies have had so far so let's get started hey guys Tiago with classical technology here remember to subscribe and smash that like button if you like content like this I do a lot of gaming PC custom water cooled PCs and I actually have a really big soft spot for the Mac Pro I upgraded it myself the one behind me here is the 28 core Mac Pro and of course being a channel that's really primarily driven by new GPUs and things like that when I saw that AMD had a very unique GPU the 6800X Duo which pretty much is not available anywhere else except in the MPX form for the Mac Pro I definitely had to try it I had the last generation Vega 2 Duo which are pretty awesome as well it's going to be two GPUs in one and I did various tests even comparing Vega 2 Duos versus a single version of the GPU when you pair them both together to see if there'd be any bandwidth limitations or things like that. So we're going to break this video up into a few different sections. First is going to be Final Cut Pro benchmarks. Second will be Resolve benchmarks, DaVinci Resolve. Third, it's going to be miscellaneous tests like some games as well as 3D work like Octane X. And then I'm also going to give you my general thoughts on the thermals, the performance, even the mining performance of these GPUs. Now off the bat, let me just address a few issues. There were a few people, a YouTube video by Morganaut that was posted recently that uh, she addressed some overheating issues with the GPU. One of the proximity sensors seemed to be going a little bit haywire and it also happened to be that her GPU did not come labeled from Apple. Now I will say that both copies that I have, both of the W6800X dual modules, both of mine came labeled perfectly and even after doing dozens and dozens of tests I have not been able to replicate or see the overheating issues that she has had. Mine have run pretty much very very coolly. In fact, even a little bit cooler than the Vega 2 Duo. You have to remember that it's two GPUs sort of packed into one. So the thermal performance is a little bit less than two single GPUs. But for most type of, you know, rendering and things like that, and even 3D work, for the most part, the GPU stayed within the range that you would expect them to be in. So I have not had that issue. Who knows what it could be? Maybe she got a bad module. Maybe there's something wrong, a glitch in certain software or something like that. But at this time, my GPU seemed to be working fine. And another interesting thing, Max from the Max Tech channel, he also got a 6900X labeled MPX module, when in reality it was a 6800X. I guess Apple made some mistake during that packing process. But I'll say once again, my two GPUs, or the two MPX modules, came without any issues at all. All right, so first, let's talk about how these GPUs perform in Final Cut Pro. A big question many people often have, can you use more than two GPUs in Final Cut Pro? Generally, you want to have the same type of GPU. If you pair like a, a 580X with a W5700X, you're not going to get good results in Final Cut Pro. It's only going to use one of them. DaVinci Resolve is a little bit different that it can utilize multi-GPU better than Final Cut, but still, most of these, it's highly recommended to do two of the same and my biggest question was what if you do four gpus of the same typically that's something that's not very common to test but there's a big difference sort of between the w6800x duo and the previous vega 2 duo they both pretty much have two gpus on one module but now with the infinity fabric link you can actually link both duals so you can link all four gpus together it pretty much communicates at five times PCIe 16 speed over 80 gigabytes a second. Previously, only the Vega 2 Dual, each GPU would have that link. So you would have to have two separate links on two separate GPU modules. But now you can actually link all four. So it does work in Final Cut Pro. It does see the four GPUs, but instead of utilizing them to sort of the full potential, it kind of spreads the workload between all four. Something a little different. You would have expected it to sort of really ramp up each four 
for but it seems to sort of separate the workload a little bit so certainly i'll say right off the bat if you're just using final cut pro you're much better off having two gpus linked together instead of four another question that's a little bit rare that some people had previously with the vega 2 and the same will hold true for the w6800 x let's say if you have two vega 2 gpus each having sort of the 16x spot that means that you're going to have 32x of the pcie bandwidth is that going to be much faster than for example a vega 2 duo which are two gpus sharing one 16x lane now according to apple's white paper on the mac pro they do say that the best performance in something like final cut even davinci resolve will be to maximize the bandwidth with two separate gpus now i tried to find where this bandwidth limit would be in many many different scenarios with two solo vega 2 versus a single vega 2 duo and they were practically identical now since apple said that the bandwidth of course is going to be more and it makes sense because you're not sharing the bandwidth in real world use even though it's theoretical i really could not find something that would cause any type of issue i mean i tested 8k raw going into you know 444 xq i even tested 12k uh, black magic raw i did all of the 3d work and things like that so i could never really find that limitation so in my opinion i always thought that the dual gpu were two and one if you're going to use two anyway definitely maybe the better way to go just because you'll be able to free up some more space in your mac pro if you want to use the slots for something else and i really couldn't find a performance penalty now the thermals of having two gpus in one it is a little bit worse than two single ones that are going to get two individual fans but it's really not that big of a difference and the mac pro's fans are more than capable of dealing with this scenario so now let's talk about some of these benchmarks the first one is going to be using final cut pro now we're going to take red 6k footage from the red komodo and we're basically going to turn off the the background rendering so that way we get sort of a fresh copy when we you know export it out and we're going to put this one to 422 hq and now i wanted to use a 20 minute clip just to see if over time there would be any thermal issues or anything like that so as you can see at the top of the leaderboards at eight minutes and 42 seconds are going to be the four gpus this is the w6800 x dual now a little bit behind it very close at 852 these are the 6900 xt these are the amd reference models they are not the w6900 x these only have 16 gigabytes of vram so as you can see here didn't make like that much of a difference interestingly enough the w5700 x uh, two of them um, was around 10 minutes and 12 seconds which is very close to the time of a w6800 x dual a single one which was 10 minutes and 14 seconds you can see the vega 2 um, two separate vega 2s are pretty close to the dual version they're going to be a little bit slower and of course at the end you'll see a single w5700 x and a single vega 2 i think final cut pro you should really use two of the same gpus as you can see the performance differences are certainly very nice now the w5700 x performing so high on this uh, benchmark you know especially with two of them pretty much coming very close or beating out the W6800X Duo. And remember, it's much cheaper. They're around $1,000 each, so considerably cheaper than the Duo. Maybe some of that could be to having two separate GPUs. Maybe the drivers are just a lot more mature. Who knows with some updates, driver updates from Apple and optimizations in Final Cut Pro, they may be able to better take advantage of the new hardware. That's certainly very possible, but interesting results nonetheless. But as you can see here, even though it's not a huge difference, four GPUs did scale for this particular red um, export so certainly four gpus were the fastest time and my opinion is that four gpus i prefer to have that for the same price or even a little cheaper than the w6900x modules which would be most likely close or a little bit slower than the time of the four gpus just because those are so expensive and if you have a program that can take advantage of four gpus i think it's going to be a better price to performance ratio now i also did a test with a 20 minute clip of red raw um, this is going to be 8k to 422 hq um, as you can see the four gpus once again win with a time of 15 minutes and 37 seconds the vega 2 actually right behind it and um, the vega 2 with two gpus actually beats out a duo which is pretty interesting even though the times are pretty close and here with the 8k footage it seems like the w5700x does drop a little bit and it's a good deal slower than four gpus i think most likely here is where we start to 
run into a little bit more of that VRAM limitation. Remember, W5700X are going to have about 16 gigabytes of VRAM each, while the Dual are going to have 32 for a total of 64 gigabytes. So certainly that's going to make a difference when you're doing something like 8K or 12K. So that would explain that difference there. Now, I did do a 4K 60p Red Raw to uh, H264. It's about a 5 minute and 40 second clip. Um, as you can see here, the W6800X Duo was the fastest with the Vega 2 being the slowest, but that makes sense because now we have much more modern uh, encoders and decoders on these newer GPUs. So that would certainly explain the difference, even though with the newer GPUs, that really isn't as big of a difference because you're going to be limited by that H264. Um, but otherwise, the only one here that's going to be a little slower will be the Vega 2. So now let's look at some DaVinci Resolve benchmarks. We'll do the same test, Red 6K to 422HQ, a 20 minute clip. As you can see, Four GPUs are by far the fastest, um, taking about four minutes and 52 seconds to export. And then after that, 26900 XT, once again, the AMD reference GPU. And you have the, the single duo, the W6800X duo. And then after that, pretty close by, you'll have the Vega 2 duo, the two separate Vega 2s, and a little bit slower, you'll have the W5700X. So in Resolve, it seemed like the 5700X didn't perform as well as in Final Cut Pro. But as we know, Resolve is certainly always gonna be, for the most part, faster in terms of export speed than similar clips if you put in Final Cut Pro. So it's just up to you which one you know, you know rather use. Now, when it's a more synthetic benchmark like the Candle uh, benchmark with the you know 6NR2, the noise reduction, as you can see, the four GPUs scale very, very well, and it kind of goes down the line with the older GPUs. So here, definitely the GPUs, and also for the 64 blur nodes, you can see in Resolve that they typically do perform very well. So now for the 8 K test. Once again, we did red 8K to 4444XQ. Um, in this case, I did a, a smaller clip, a five minute clip. I wanted to see if there's going to be any type of difference. Now, the Vega 2 was actually the fastest two of them, two solo Vega 2s connected by Infinity Fabric. That gave me about four minutes and 18 seconds. And right behind it are actually the four GPUs, the W6800X Dual times two. That gave me a time of four minutes and 47 seconds. The W6800X Dual, the single dual card, gave me a little bit slower, pretty close to four minutes and 52 seconds. Now, these certainly are very peculiar times because you would think DaVinci Resolve would scale with four GPUs much better than Final Cut did. But in this particular case, it really didn't. It didn't seem to utilize all four GPUs as much as it usually does with multi GPUs. Maybe DaVinci Resolve or maybe the Apple drivers for these AMD GPUs just need some type of update for them to be optimized. It is very, very early still. So there there could be various software updates as Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve. They usually update and they optimize for the hardware. But as of right now, in DaVinci Resolve, the 4 GPU score is certainly pretty weird. If you notice in parentheses, I have a number there like 932 megabytes, 845. I was keeping track of the, the disk speed because I wanted to make sure there wasn't a bottleneck anywhere else. Of course, this was on a 28 core uh, Mac Pro. And here I did have the options for red turned on in DaVinci Resolve, both the decompression as well as the debayer. That's how you'll put most of the load on the GPU. But believe it or not, the CPU is still used pretty extensively with um, red footage, especially if you're doing something like 8K and going to 4444XQ. Definitely very demanding. But I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any major bottlenecks. If you see the speed for the Vega 2 on the hard drive, it's actually a little bit faster, almost by 100 megabytes a second. So so who knows, maybe that could make a bit of that difference that we're seeing there. I'm not sure why I tested it multiple times and it just seemed like the Vega 2 was always a little bit faster. It's possible the Vega 2 is just a little better optimized because it's been out for much longer. And remember the Vega 2 does have twice the memory bandwidth as the W6800X Dual, which they're about, you know, half the speed, one terabyte to 512 gigabytes. So maybe 
even though they have the same amount of VRAM, maybe that could make a difference. A little bit faster memory bandwidth. But anyway, the scores are pretty close. The four GPUs should certainly scale better. And when we did the red 6K footage, they certainly scaled a lot better than their scaling here. So it could be something particular to the red 8K and some of the demands. But overall, I still recommend two GPUs for Resolve and Final Cut, just a lot more cost effective and you get most of the performance anyway, unless we get better optimizations in the future. I think four GPUs really are meant more for 3D work and things like that. So now let's get into some other benchmarks. In gaming, if you do want to game in Mac OS, these are some of the numbers. I compared it to an RTX 3090, which is going to be the top on the PC. Of course, you can't put that in Mac OS, but as you can see, a 6900 XT is about 85 FPS in the, the Tomb Raider benchmark. The Dual, remember, it's only going to be using one GPU, not four for gaming. They're not linked at all for gaming. It's going to be 70 FPS, so that's not too bad. It's definitely a lot faster than the W5700X as well as the Vega 2. Now, this is at 4K, so you can get more than 60 frames per second with a single W6800X. Definitely great performance. If you want a little more, you have to jump up to the 6900X, but certainly not bad if you want to do some gaming occasionally. Now, this is where the GPUs really start to show their difference this is going to be in the octane x um, trench benchmark now this is going to be 3d rendering as you can see four gpus scale really well it takes about 27 seconds for one w6800x to complete the benchmark when you add two the time goes down to 13 seconds add three nine seconds and finally and you go up to four gpus and you're going to get the fastest time of seven seconds to render the benchmark as you can see even two 6900 xt plus a w 5700x was around eight seconds so those numbers should be switched the eight should be above the nine but anyway the four gpus are still going to be the fastest and as you go down the line you see the other gpus a single vega 2 is about 33 seconds in this particular benchmark but here definitely showing some pretty impressive numbers and if we continue on to redshift the redshift benchmark you'll see that this is going to be the fastest time for any mac ever the w6800x dual two of them for a total of four gpus was a total of one minute and 46 seconds which actually compares very favorably to some of the nvidia gpus on the pc side even though those are generally still going to be much faster especially if you have more than two of them now the single w6800x dual for two gpus that that was a time of three minutes and 20 seconds. So you can see how well 3D work scales here from two to four it really makes a tremendous difference. And for comparison, the Vega 2, two GPUs was a time of around four seconds. So the new GPUs compared to the Vega 2 for 3D work, that's a pretty substantial gain from four seconds to three minutes and 20 seconds. Now, if you extrapolate that over a much you know longer render or something like that, you'll definitely get a nice difference. And of course, the best time here by far is going to be having four GPUs. So these are all of the benchmarks. I mean, I did run many other benchmarks like with 12K B raw and different things like that, but the results were all similar to what I'm showing here. And there were some results that were a little bit funny, like that uh, red 8K in DaVinci Resolve. Um, I tested it multiple times and always got the same result. So there's definitely something bottlenecking there or something not well optimized yet. I'm still going to try different numbers and different benchmarks to see if I can get different results. But but anytime you're benchmarking new GPUs, you always have these things happen. There sometimes aren't driver optimizations. They can make a huge difference as well as app optimizations like Resolve and Final Cut Pro. So at the end of the day, if you're a video editor, I would definitely recommend two GPUs. Um, I think for the price of the W6800X Duo, they're going to be the best bang for your buck. They certainly are not as fast as the W6900X, but that for $6,000 compared to 5,000 for two of these, I think it's a much better deal. I almost rather have four of these like we have tested here rather than two 6900X duels. Those will be fastest in Final Cut and maybe even Resolve in many cases, but I think bang for the buck, the W6800X dual is definitely great in terms of the new GPUs. And don't forget about the previous generations. If you can find on sale the Vega 2, especially two of them, they may get pretty cheap. And don't forget the W5700X. It actually 
actually performs really well in many tests and for the price of a thousand dollars each if you put two of these together they're actually really good for final cut for resolve and even for all of the 3d work definitely price to performance that's going to be one of the best but if you want the newer gpu i recommend the w6800 x duo at least you're getting two gpus and it can scale well in final cut and davinci resolve and i think it's going to be better than having just one gpu but apple doesn't really push for gpus for video editors anyway it really is meant more for 3d rendering in that type of work and in that case it actually does really well all right guys let me know if you have any questions or you want to see any other benchmarks i definitely plan to keep testing these as they optimize them and update different drivers i hope these numbers give you a little bit of an idea as to what this gpu can do remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video